Yo guys, what's up? Axon back with another video here today, and today we're doing another Yu-Gi-Oh! tier list. Last time I did Yu-Gi-Oh! staples, now I kind of wanted to do a niche down a little bit and do Yu-Gi-Oh! hand traps. Now, the Duelist Cup ended recently, and I went against a lot of different decks, a lot of variety of decks. I even made it to the second stage. I didn't go that far into the second stage because I kind of made it a little late. But I kind of had an understanding what was like meta and what was a lot used during the Duelist Cup and what was the most popular hand trap. So I decided, let me just present a tier list of some of the best hand traps and some of the most used hand traps I saw in the Duelist Cup and just put it into a tier list and give my thoughts. And obviously, this is my opinion. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion down in the comments. What do you guys think is the best hand trap and which ones do you think is the worst hand trap? Because my opinions could be different from yours. But I like to throw my two cents in there. So obviously I have picked a lot of uh, hand traps. Obviously not as much as my staple tier list. Obviously I missed out on a few. So leave it down in the comments if you want a part two of this. But obviously I have a pretty much all the main ones and a couple of niche ones. But starting off with Gamma Frame. This one is was very popular. It's gotten more popular in this Duelist Cup. Because I did not see it as much uh, until recently. Obviously it's been used. But I saw it more used nowadays i would give this an a tier i don't think it's an s tier i think it's working its way up to an s tier a uh, good against maxi gets you some bodies on the on the field pretty solid one but s tier i'm gonna reserve for some of the best hand traps obviously we know which ones are the best hand traps <clears throat> maxi but uh speaking of some of the best hand traps obviously we have to put os blossom at s tier this is kind of our border of you know this is the best hand trap in the game in my personal opinion uh obviously maxi is a hand trap but you know Maxi is just a game changer. Ash Blossom is just good in every form of Yu-Gi-Oh! So you can't go wrong with this. Next up, I have two Bestials. Now, I obviously missing out on some of the other Bestials. But I just kind of wanted to reserve it to these two Bestials. Because these are the most played Bestials in the game. And if you don't know what Bestials are, if you're sleeping under the rock, pretty much you banish one dark or light monster and you special summon this. And one allows you, if it goes to the graveyard, you can destroy one special summon monster. The other one, Magno Hut, is the more popular one. Where once it's special summoned, you can add a dragon monster to your hand at the end of the turn. And it's good because it's a lingering effect. It's a floating effect, so you know it won't it won't resolve to the end phase. Now, both of them are really good. Now, obviously, Magma Hut is great for Dragon Decks and also really good for Vanquish Soul, which is my personal favorite deck. Vanquish Soul is so fun to play. Probably my favorite meta deck over the recent years. Probably all year. Vanquish Soul is probably my favorite. But Magna Hut, I'd put it S tier. I think it's that good. I'd also put Juice Worm also in S tier. I think if you can put these two into your decks, they're going to help you out a lot. They're pretty much like DD Crow, but you got to have like an extra monster in the field that you can go into Underworld Goddess if you just need more bodies to the field. Go into Link Monsters, banish a Darker Light Monster, which is the most popular type in the game. And, you know, it's usually so good. I honestly think if you can play this in any deck, it's worth it. Next up is Contact with the Sea. You know, obviously not as popular as its other brother, uh, Maxi. But, you know, this is pretty much a floodgate. Pretty much uh, when your opponent special summons a monster, you get a special summon this onto your opponent's side. And they have to use this as material for anything they use in their extra deck. Obviously, it's a good counter against Kashira. Good counter against Pearly. I'm pretty sure it's a good counter against Pearly. I'm pretty sure. I'm not too sure. But I used this a couple of times. and But I saw more people play it uh, in the Duelist Cup than I actually used it myself. I'd put this, it's either D or C. Like, it's good when you know you're playing cats against Kashira. It's a good, like, counter card. But if you just have it thrown in your deck, this will be useless a lot of the times. It might just be a brick most of the times. Because most people can link into, uh, use this as a link material into their extra deck. They can use this as a material for Underworld Gods. They can use this as a material for IP. This uh, gives them a link material. If you're going against Dragon Link, this is totally useful. So it just kind of depends if you know the matchup, but I'd put this at D. If the whole meta was just Kashira, obviously this card would be higher rated up. Next up is a Ghost Sister card, the dog one. Pretty much every time they special summon monster, the attack they have, you gain life points to it. I love this card mainly for meme decks. It doesn't get used that much in like meta decks, but I love this card because you just activate this card and for some reason your opponent tries to play through this because it's such an underutilized card and some so many people just like to play through hand traps and they don't realize at the end of the turn I have a gajillion life points and they really can't do that and I have like I have a million health and unless they're running galaxy eyes it's gonna take a while to even dent my health points after this pops off and they try to play through it but besides that it's a D tier besides for meme decks which I love to run meme decks obviously you can see in my channel I run a bunch of challenge decks i don't think this is good for most of the decks especially if you're trying to compete in high levels but it is still fun to play 
Next up is Ghost Ogre. Now Ghost Ogre, obviously the best hand trap for Punk, but also good for other decks, but mainly Punk is where it shines. Obviously, I think this card is pretty good especially in punk because personally me i felt like i was going against a lot of punk players in the duelist club and i think punk is a really good deck because you can splash into many other decks like blue eyes dark magician you can literally throw any deck into it and it works i saw someone using burning abyss and punk a deck and that was one of the best decks i seen in the duelist cup that i even copied his deck uh and i might even use that deck as a future challenge video piece that deck was amazing that i'd love to show it off to you guys because i had never seen it before a punk burning abyss deck was an amazing deck and ghost ogre just works so well with punk and since punk is pretty solid i'd put this i'd put it at b tier i think this is a b tier it's good but if punk was just a little bit better i could put it in a i still think uh side frame is better in my opinion next is droll and lockbird now droll and lockbird it's either s or a if you look at the decks uh branded probably can play through droll vanquish can definitely play through droll uh labyrinth i guess it could slightly play through droll but obviously it's a huge detriment i feel like right now there's a lot of decks in the meta right now that can play through droll i'll put this in a tier right now you can you can heavily argue right now it's like it's like high a tier for me obviously i'm not ranking these tiers but just know it's definitely high a tier for me next up dd crow now dd crow it's pretty much i would say like a little weaker version than bisto magma Hut and bisto juice worm but it's still pretty good obviously i wouldn't see i most of the time i'm just running juice worm or magma Hut, but obviously people love to run dd crow i'm not a personal big fan of it i'd rather so on the bristles but obviously this is still really good i'd put it at b tier really solid really good uh but you know just not as good as a tier next up is nibiru now, Nibiru, I have really mixed feelings right now because I feel some of the best decks can play through Nibiru. Like, they obviously have Apoloza. Vanquish Soul doesn't special enough times to even, like, get Nibiru for most of the time. And obviously, they have Continue, and they have the Trap card to special summon more on monsters. Branded doesn't special enough times to even get hit by Nibiru. So, right now, I feel like Nibiru is at its worst time right now, and... It's not even good for like a Vanquish Soul deck where the attribute's that great. So I personally don't think it's that great right now. Uh, obviously, when you're going to God's, a combo deck, it's definitely S tier. But right now, for the current meta and the like current popular decks, Labyrinth is not special with something right now. Uh, Dragon Link is alright. I guess I'll put it... It's either C or B for me. I don't think it's that great right now in the meta. I don't think... If you're going into like ranked, I don't... I don't really see you getting that much use off of it because Vanquish was so popular right now. Uh, so I'll put this in B tier. Obviously, it's still a really good card. When people are playing combo decks and there's special summoning left and right, and so many, like, when they have, like, 10 billion special summons, obviously this is S tier. But right now, I feel like it's in B tier because I feel like some of the most popular decks are not special summoning that much. Uh, obviously, let me know down in your comments. Maybe I haven't been playing against a lot of decks that special summon so much. But personally, when I've been playing the Duelist Club, I did not see a lot of decks that special summon that much. Next up is Chaos Hunter. Now, Chaos Hunter was a card I had in every deck when Cashier was super huge. A free body. You get a discard one card. Obviously good for zombie decks. Obviously good for a lot of decks. Just an easy card to throw in there to stop your opponent from banishing. And it's 2,500 pretty good stats uh but right now it's a d tier honestly like since since the meta is not revolved around banishing cards from your graveyard like decks like cashier and tier limits ever since cashier kind of fell off a bit you know they banned a couple of the cards it's not it hasn't been as good as it used to be next up is effect failure now effect failure ah, effect failure is an interesting one because it's pretty much a weaker imperm and i would recommend an imperm like 10 times over than effect failure mainly one reason because imperm doesn't activate triple tactics talents or triple tactics through us which are really big cards in the meta right now and cards everyone uses if you can throw them into the deck they're really good cards so i'd put this i'll put this as c tier I'll, this will be our first c tier lower ranking i thought about putting a d tier but i feel like it's still a pretty usable card i know dual links is having the whole mental breakdown from effect failure being released i saw some like videos where like duel links is ruined because effect failure is out to which i thought was pretty funny like imagine duel links players being so mad at effect failure like if, if that's your biggest problem god i wish i was you because the type of decks we're seeing against right now the type of hand traps we see nowadays like if effector if effect failure was my only problem i had to worry about i'd be living a peaceful life i'd be going to sleep like a, a barren hibernation Next up is Ghost Bell. Ghost Bell is either A or B. 
I would say just because it can destroy cards, I think it's such a useful effect that kind of puts it over the edge. And it's way more versatile than Ghost Ogre. It's either B or A. I'd put it A for right now. A really good card. Obviously, Ghost Ogre better when it's played in a punk deck. But you can obviously argue that they're kind of the same tier. But I feel like Ghost Bell was a slightly harder, higher for right now. Next up, Honest. Obviously, one of the OG hand shots in the day. Uh, I saw this a couple times throughout my Duelist Cup, um, mainly for like Galaxy Eyes, some random decks, some random decks were running Honest. Honest ha is like a weird curious case because Honest is actually a good card, but when it comes to like putting in this deck, it's just kind of a weird card. Like this card is like so good in its own unique way because like no one expects it. That's what makes it so good. And I feel like one day this card can be really good one all you have to do is big damage numbers and i feel like honest can be good one day but for right now i'll put a c tier i think it's better than anything d tier next up is imperm imperm is an s tier i think we don't have to argue with this good for going second place it down as going first uh obviously when you like draw it in like turn three or turn four or turn five or turn six and then it's like it loses its value but since so many decks destroy in like turn one or turn two and that's when like mainly you want to get your negates up to like slow them down Imperm is amazing. If you draw Imperm on your first turn, you can obviously set it, and everyone's afraid of the Imperm column, so super good. Uh, and plus, it can be activated as a hand trap. You activate it for hand if you have no face up monsters or face up cards. I face up monster for up cards. If you have no face up cards, you can activate this in your hand and negate one card in the field, which is pretty good. Also, I totally forgot to put Dimension Shifter into this tier list. Obviously, it's S tier, no doubt about it. It can stop Max C. It can stop most decks from using the graveyard, which is already OP. Deserving S here, like I said in multiple videos. I feel like this card should be banned, but it's undeniably good. And to final off, uh, we have to talk about the best card in the game. The card that everyone wants against banned, uh, Maxi. Obviously the best card in the game. There's a reason why Maxi is the most played card in the game in Master Duel. There's a reason why it's... Hated by everyone, but loved by everyone in some cases. I personally don't have an opinion because I played Master Duel this whole entire time. And Master Duel is kind of my like beginner format into modern Yu-Gi-Oh. You can even watch my video about how I got back into modern Yu-Gi-Oh. It's on the channel. You can take a couple of videos back. But you can tell that I don't really... I Since I've been playing modern Yu-Gi-Oh, Maxi has always been around since Master Duel is the main way I play modern Yu-Gi-Oh. So I never really had an issue with it. I'm, I'm going to attach it right now. Maxi, it's not even debatable that it's S tier. Hate it or love it, it's the best card in the game right now. All right, that's my tier list. Let me know your guys' tier list. I want to know what your guys' thoughts on my tier list. Maybe you think DD Crow is better. Maybe you think Chaos Hunter is making a comeback. I personally don't think so, but maybe you think Effect Failure should be higher. I do like the card art. I'd love to put Effect Failure in my decks, but I know there's just better options. So let me know down in the comments your personal opinion on my tier list, and I want to know your thoughts on what should be higher or lower. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope to see you guys next time. Later, hater. Peace.